Hey guys! Today I wanted to talk to you guys about family and when your family's an addict, what to do, how to do it, how to help someone, the best things you can do. I'll tell you my story and I'm not saying this works for everyone because everybody's different. But what my family did with me, they, of course, you know, they helped me for a long time. And then eventually they were like, okay, you can't be around us. You can't be around the kids. You need to get clean. But they always answered the phone. They didn't give me money. They didn't, you know, they didn't do any of that stuff. But when I called them crying and whatnot, they always answered the phone. And they always told me they loved me and that they were worried about me. And they just wanted me safe. They wanted me clean. When I'd go to jail, they would say, we're just glad you're safe. You know, they might send me money here and there in jail, but that's it. They weren't, they were very firm with me and I respect them for that. I'm not mad at them for that, but I do know every addict is different. And I have heard, you know, sometimes that doesn't end well when families cut off addicts. It's just how how you handle it. It's not about like completely cutting them off and saying, you know, forget you and then ignoring them. Cause some people do that. Sometimes that does happen. Some families are fed up with it. They can't handle it. Like I said, everybody's story is different. We all do different things to people. Maybe it was more often to their family or something. Everybody's story is different. Everybody can handle different things. But my best advice is, you know, if somebody's hungry, feed them. Even I, even now, I'll feed you if you're hungry. But yeah, you just have to figure out what's best for you in your situation and what you can handle as a person. And if it's your family, like your parents or somebody you live with, that was tough growing up. I always had to find like a safe space. And for me, it was in my bedroom listening to music. That was my safe space having someone to talk to whether it's a best friend or somebody just some a counselor at school somebody just to get that off your chest your sibling somebody there's got to be somebody you know we didn't have social media back then to where you could just message someone so yeah i mean that that really helped and i know you say the word therapy and people are like crazy when it comes to that word i don't know why because it's good for you therapy group whatever some you know mental health meds whatever you need you got to do what's best for you what's going to help you because nobody should be suffering and nobody should be embarrassed to ask for help nobody's perfect nobody there are al-anon meetings for the family and friends of addicts and that's the same as like the meetings for the addicts but it's the friends and family and they kind of help you and guide you and you could vent about what's going on. You can ask for help. It's the same thing. They help you with different scenarios on what to do. That would be a good place to start because you can ask an addict, but we all have different stories and we all have different opinions on what works because different things work for different people. So maybe talking to someone on the outside that is dealing with it or has been through it, they could give you different options. I know that there's like online meetings and stuff. You just have to look in your area or just Google online meetings, but they're out there. Like there's so many resources with that now and it doesn't cost anything to go to group or talk or just listen. I always say, don't give up. You don't have to do everything for somebody to not give up. You can still have hope, have some hope that they're going to change one day and sometimes it takes us a few times so if you have somebody in your life that got clean and relapsed got clean and relapsed don't give up on them because it takes most of us a few times but the fact that they're trying i feel like what ends up happening is addicts we get clean and then we end up relapsing and then everybody gets so mad at us they give up on us and that does make us feel worse because we already don't understand what's going on with us anyways and why we're doing it when we know it's bad. We know what it's going to do. We know what's going to happen, but we do it anyway. We, us as addicts, we don't understand that. Once you get clean and you, you learn all that, that's different. But when you're going through all that, relapse, clean, relapse, clean, it's different when you don't know. So sometimes it's nice to have at least one person in your corner that's understanding like, hey, you know what? 
it happens. Don't beat yourself up. Just start over. It's okay. It happens. It happens to a lot of addicts. Brush your shoulders off and get up and try it again. Sometimes we just need that cheerleader in, in our ear. Just one person to care. Just one. And if that's all you can do to support someone is to literally talk on the phone and try to, you know, cheer them on, then that's what you can do. You can't feel guilty because you can't do more or less. That is your healthy boundaries. That is what you're able to do. And that words speak volume. I know for me, my family caring or, you know, answering the phone or randomly calling me, it let me know that somebody loved me still. Even through my darkest times, I knew why we weren't talking. is because of what I was doing, not because they just didn't care about me. They always cared about me. I hope that helps you guys. I know there's harm reduction out there. I know some people do help with meds and showers and food and Narcan and different things. Heard other people talk about, but I just only know my story. I can only share my story. So if there's harm reduction, if you, if you want to learn more about that, there's definitely resources. Some people say it'll be enabling. Some people say it's not. I say you do what you're comfortable with. You do what you can do what you want to do and what you can do. Nobody is obligated either way to help or not to help. You can only do what you can do. And I just say no matter what, whatever you do, try to do it out of love. Be patient. You gotta be patient. Be patient with yourself if you're an addict. And just keep trying, keep trying. No matter what, y'all, no matter what. I don't care if you've been clean a week and you relapse. You've been clean 10 years and you relapse. You just start back over. We know we've all done that. We've all done that. And we all know we just got to start over again. Just, we know how it is. We know. Just don't give up on yourself. And the families, families don't give up on your, don't give up on each other. Don't do it alone. There's resources. Like I said, there's so many resources, you guys. Don't give up on each other. I always say this. Reach out to anyone. There's so many people that have been through this, and nobody is alone. I don't care how old, young you are. I don't care what your past is. I don't care what it is. Nobody has to do any of this alone. Can you help me with a little money? I can't and I don't even have it. Okay, maybe a ride? I can't, no. Fine, whatever. Look, don't hang up, just hear me out. I love you and I want you to be okay. I just want you to get clean. I can't, I've tried, I can't do it. Don't say that, you're one of the strongest people I know. You know I love you, I'm here to support you. When you're ready to get clean, I will be here to support you 100%. Okay, you know if you're hungry, I'll get you something to eat, but don't give up on yourself. Okay, thanks. They still care? I don't know, maybe I can get clean.